What's up, Rangers? Welcome to the Geek Chest. My name's Steve. My name's Arnaz. And today we're going to be reviewing the 12 inch Lantern Predator from the new Predator Wave that they're doing. Uh, which we're going to do this one. We'll probably do the smaller ones too for giggles. They'll probably be all in one video though. Yeah, it's if like we a do them. Of each, like one with the Predators, one with the Alien. Yeah, we'll go over them as a set. But he'll get his own special little video because he's kind of a unique figure in its own right. Right, anyways. Um, main reason I picked this up, really love the film Predator. Uh, easily one of the better sci fi movies that I've ever seen. God, yeah. It's pretty much like this Aliens, Star Wars, <laughs> and Starship Troopers. Starship are probably my three, are probably my four favorite. I agree with you, everything all the way up to the Star Wars part. Like, in terms of just like in out, like outer space related things. Now, if we talk about the old Star Wars, then yes. Yeah, I just mean, like, Star Wars as a whole. Mm. As a whole, there's still... I think the the good outweighs the negative. Because, really, the only negative I have are, like, two of the movies. Okay, I'll give you that, because the original three movies are so good, it makes up for 90% of yeah, the Yeah, original are fantastic. Prequels, I still am fine with. Although, Attack of the Clones is a bit rough. And then, for the new a ones... Bit rough? What the hell is a matter? It's a little bit rough. Um, new ones... You got one that's unwatchable, one that's a bit rough, and one that's fine. And then you got the spin-off movies that are all pretty solid. You know, I keep hearing that. Like Rogue it's One's really, really good. Han Solo's fun. Uh, the solo film's fun. Uh, Predator's kind of in the same boat. You have one that's really good, one that's really good, uh, one that's all right, and then one that we don't want to talk about anymore. Whoa, 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 whoa. What's wrong with that movie? It gave us the greatest thing that has ever existed. And what's that? It... I'll I'm waiting. The Predator Dog. There you go. The mentally challenged Predator Dog. <sighs> so, uh, since we have him out of his cardboard prison, <laughs> we're just going to get into him. If you guys would be interested in seeing the cardboard prison, we did unboxings for everybody. Uh, Predator's got their own video. Alien's got their own video. There'll be a card somewhere over here. Um, make sure to go check it out. But anyways, let's take a closer look at his details. Steve's butt hurt. <laughs> a little bit. We're still talking about Predator, the Predator and how just like every time I watch the movie, the more I just realize how much I don't like it. There's, oh. Like I saw it in theaters. I was like, yeah, that was, it was okay. I talked myself for it to be all right. And then like I watched it when it came out and I'm like, uh, okay. And I think I watched it one more time and I'm like, I'm probably never putting this DVD back in. <laughs> well, it's like, like, I tried to do the same thing with The Last Jedi. Like, I watched it twice in theaters. Because somebody wanted to go, and I'm like, I like popcorn. You and disgust me. I still have never bought it on video. <laughs> it's just, oh, it's so bad. Anyways, you, you guys are here for figures. First, closer details. Head sculpt is great. Um, it's covered with this mask, though, which is Jai freaking Canic. A lot of that is because this is actually, like, the only real accessory he has. Because it's removable. Now, I got a question. On top of his mask, is that damage or is that battle damage? Like, I can see it now. See it? Yeah, no, I think that's um damage, but a lot of that I think is just the way the plastic mold is. You think so? Yeah, like, you, you can't feel it. I think it's just the way, like, the plastic was um forming for the helmet. Hmm. And then that's where the crack things kind of happen. Um, But I think, like, aesthetically, it kind of matches the helmet. Because you'll see it, it's right here, too. It's coming down. It's almost like a little teardrop thing going on it looks nice um i don't know why it's got two of the ports here though because you got them here and this one which is like the targeting laser for the, the actual you, laser um should probably grab the other one but i guess it's kind of on that one too it's just more noticeable on this one and you got the eyes which is just done in a uh, slightly darker matte gray which this does come off which is pretty easy it's just held in by uh friction although on the inside it looks like there's a bunch of little fingerprints <laughs> everywhere i guess it's supposed to be kind of like skin texturing that is weird skin texturing steve i'll let you know that right, right? now it's a bit odd uh but that's pretty much it for his accessory uh for the actual figure we'll go over the gimmicks first which he has for his mouth he can push the top of his head in and it opens hey unlike the queen at least he comes with an accessory steve that is true, but it's kind of weird, right, that, like, you have this gimmick here for his mouth to open, but he doesn't roar. Mm. 
it's a little strange, right? Like, I when I went to buy this, I thought it was broke. Because <laughs> it wasn't roaring, and I'm like, where's the button? Where's the battery pack go? And then, I was like, hey, the, this looks like it might... I was like, oh, maybe I have to push this for it to roar. And then blinded myself with this thing. <laughs> so I had it, like, right next to my head doing it. But yes, uh, the laser actually works. It is a giant laser pointer. Oh. It is super duper bright. Oh, it would have been kind of cool if there was maybe like a little plastic thing though to kind of give you like the three dots. I think it would have been cool. Maybe asking a little too much, but I think like for collecting purposes, that would have been kind of neat. And even for kids. I mean, at this point in time, it is a collectible for kids or playable for kids, Steve. I, I'm happy that it happened. Yeah, it's, like, it's meant for kids. So like the laser's cool. I think as a child... I don't know. I think it would actually bug me when I was younger because it didn't have the three. I still would have played with crap out of this thing. But it having the three dots just would have made it way more appealing. But yeah, it's cool that it does this, but I really wish it roared. Did something. <laughs> like when I did this, otherwise I just got to see him like making the sounds myself and nobody wants that. Just, <laughs> you know? Uh, but outside of that, uh, everything else is pretty much fully affixed to the figure, which is a positive and a negative, because I don't have to worry about anything breaking off. But then again, I really wish this data pad actually opened up. Granted, his ability, I don't think, would have really made it worthwhile for it to, because it's not like he could have reached his arm over and made it look like he was, like, playing around with this, like he yeah. set the bomb up or something. But I don't know. Just like I'm so accustomed to like the neck is doing it, and it almost looks like it should. The way the plastic's set up, like this is actually like set up over top of it, but it ain't don't do nothing. Uh, same with the claw here too. This doesn't retract or go in, so that's going to be staying in one fixed position. Which, uh, again, like compared to like the old Kenners and stuff, I, I they used to be like that too, so that doesn't bug me, especially with this being a cheaper price point. Uh, again. Totally fine. It's not like even with the NECAs and stuff, I really like swap with the blaze all the time. It's usually I pick one and just we're good. Uh, but for the rest of the head, uh, paint job is very nice where you get the uh, majority of the alien is done in like an like an olive-ish green or like a lime green. It's really like off bright green. And then you got a dark green for the texturing over top of the skin. Again, there's different coloring on him. It's not just red. Which is good. Uh, one thing... Except this penis area kind of bugs me. Okay, go on. Well, it's just like a metal thing, like a metal... Oh, yeah, he's got to protect himself. Everything it's else dangerous around, in the woods. Everything else around is like a little uh, Tarzan thing. And it's <laughs> a metal cop. Well, yeah, because like, that, that's the most important part. How is he going to reproduce if something happens? I'm trying to be, be around. And then in back, it's like, okay, so front, it's all, like, Tarzan looking, and then you got a cup, and in the back, is just, like, straight It's red. just kind of there. He's actually got a little towel to wipe off with right there. Oh, Something. I bet, but you, I bet you takes a predator dump. <laughs> right. The biggest of predators. Uh, one thing that kind of sucks is he does have screw holes on the back, so that is a thing. Um, the rest of the paint job-wise, you can see here, he does have the netting. For the skin. Um, one thing I'm noticing, this arm doesn't have netting on it. It's a special arm. This arm has netting on it, Yeah, though. it does. That's a little weird. The other one don't. Um, hold up. I feel like I need to grab a neck now. <laughs> uh, just to kind of... Well, I guess comparison-wise, we'll come back to that. Uh, but they didn't paint the netting, which I kind of get. Uh, but would have been nice. Because it's kind of weird that they gave us the netting texturing, but then decided not to paint it. Right? Yeah, it's sort of like cheaping out. Yeah, it's almost like they maybe could have just saved them on the detailing, not added the netting, but then people probably would have complained that they didn't have the netting texturing because it's a predator, so... Either way, somebody's going to be... Yeah, it's, it's like you win and lose. Um, but you do have like the leather strap here. This is mainly just plastic here for the metallic look. Uh, that's painted. Because this, uh, the initial plastics here is green. Uh, you got the black here for the ring, which isn't painted on the back of the neck, though. Oh, God. Um, moving down to the forearms, it's just one solid hunk of gray plastic. So you'll see where the skin is. It's still that metallic silver, which I wish they would have painted that at least. Because 
I don't know. For me, it is a little distracting. A little bit, yeah. On my shelf. Uh, not horrendous. Like, I think, again, for kids, it won't be that big of a deal. And to be honest, you might they might not even notice. <laughs> but uh, for like, as a collectible, I think uh, that's, like, one of the one thing I've noticed on the arms that maybe could have been a little bit better. Uh, you got the hands here, which are just green plastic. No paint job for the nails. Uh, we talked a lot about the loincloth already, so for the legs, uh, he's got the little metal uh, pads on the sides of the thighs. Um, rest of the leg, again, just metallic, plastic. You still get some of the skin texturing here, but sadly, just all metal all the time. He's got a little knee pads. And then for his feet, you got the five-ish toes. It's always got like this weird little big toe thing going on in the back here and then you got a couple extra little nails on the rear of the heel and yeah that's pretty much about it uh for his articulation we're going to start here at the knees because you might have noticed they are super de duper loose but he's got a double joint so he's actually really pulls about the knee but uh he can't hold himself up worth the damn uh, but the leg, the bottom of the feet can rotate all the way around they're on a ball joint so he's got a lot of posability his legs can go out about that far, inwards about that far. Decent forward kick, decent back kick. But, like, at least for mine, the knees here, like, any kind of <laughs> movement's going to shift him back. So he almost needs a stand. Uh, yeah, I feel like he actually needs one of those uh, ratchet stands from the back, you know, to grab him by his tummy, kind of. Yeah, something like that, or like a doll stand. Because I don't think he has holes in the bottom, does he? Uh, No. Which wouldn't help you anyways because it's a knee issue. Yeah. Uh, but for the hands... I feel like it could be just yours, though, that has the knee issues. I, I'm i hard-pressed to believe that because it's not a ratchet. It's just it's just held in with friction. So it, I would assume it's a fairly common thing. Uh, the elbows don't got much of a bend to them, sadly, but you can rotate. The arms can rotate all the way around and go inwards and out. He's got... A ball joint here at the waist, so a lot of play there. And this head can rotate eh, not much side to side because the dreadlocks kind of get in the way of everything. It's a little sad. Uh, but the gun can move side to side. So he's got that going for him. Have quick comparisons here. We have the 12 inch Predator from Lantern compared next to some other Lantern Predator figures with the smaller 6 inch scale. <laughs> uh, 6, 7 inch scale. Uh, with the City Hunter Predator, which I screwed up in the last video. I called the Jungle Hunter the City Hunter, but this is the City Hunter. And the Berserker. Hey, here's next to some Lantern Aliens figures with the standard release of the Warrior Alien and the smaller playset Drone Alien. And for some other larger purchases, here he is next to the Lantern 12 inch Lights and Sounds Queen and the Plasma Series Ghostbusters Afterlife Ecto 1 from Hasbro. Hey, here's next to some NECA Predator releases, which hopefully I get the names right. But this is the Warrior Predator from the Alien vs. Predator video game and the Jungle Demon Predator from the first film. And for some random comparisons, here is next to some Kotobuki or Horror Bushojo figures with Pennywise and Leatherface. So overall for the Lantern Predator figure, the 12 inch lights and sounds version, he... I don't know about I think the sounds. For 20 part. bucks. Yeah, well, yeah, I guess he does have sounds. <laughs> <laughs> lights and mouth movement. Um... He's fine. I think as a toy, he's really cool. Yeah. As a collectible, uh, it depends on how much variety you want in your collection. Yeah. Like, if you're going to go for just, like, I just want a Predator just to have a Predator, I would say the $10 ones are probably in uh, where you want to be at that point. Because at this point, like, the way I look at it, the difference between this uh, big one and a small one is $10, right? So yeah. you break it down, you got to find out if the removable helmet, moving jaw, and the lights is worth 10 extra dollars. And the size. The size doesn't really matter that much. You know? Yeah, like collected purposes. Like, big's cool, but like if the other figures are just as detailed as the big ones, kind of a whatever yeah. at that point. And like I mentioned, like, he doesn't have like a small counterpart. Like his small counterpart's still different. So... I would recommend him. Like, for 20 bucks, I think he's solid. Especially for kids, I think he's great. Um, but he's not going to really replace, like, a NECA in my collection. No. No. And he only... 
Like for me, the Predator line that they did remind me a little bit of the Kenners, but not nearly as much as like the aliens, per se. Like I think the Queen did a better job at being a Kenner than the Predator does. Yeah. And a lot of that has to do with scale. Because like the Queen can play really well with the smaller figures, while Big Predator doesn't really got anybody to play with. That's not true. We'll just paint him differently, he'll be the Predator Assassin. Because he's bigger than everyone. <laughs> right? We'll figure this out. We'll just extend his blade out really big and... So again, cool for kids, uh, but for adults looking to pick this guy up, for I think he's way more suited for somebody for that likes to customize. Like, if you're going to paint him up, he's, he would look actually really sweet. Like, you spend a little bit of time on him to paint the netting... And add the coloring and the parts of, for the gray plastic and maybe give him a little bit of a wash over the metal. Yeah. Uh, he would look fantastic. So if you're willing to put a little bit of extra money into him too, could be a really awesome addition to your collection. What do you guys think? Have you guys picked up this figure? What's your favorite Leonard action figure? Or is Skull Island just more you think? Please let us know in the comments. We also have an Instagram, Patreon, Pinterest, Facebook. Guys, like to keep up with the day with channel. Donate. We greatly appreciate it. And help us defeat those kaijus by hitting that like button, subscribe, and arrange your day. See you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.